Hello and welcome to TL Physics and today I am going to talk about CCDs. Now CCDs, or charge coupled devices, are sort of the forefront of telescopes and looking at uh, the stars. Now our eye is a bit naff. It has a very, very low quantum efficiency. So quantum efficiency, just to explain, So the quantum efficiency is basically the number of photons detected versus the number that actually hit it. Okay, so this is the number of photons detected, detected divided by the number of photons at incident. And of course, that's times by 100. So basically what it is, is that our eye receives photons of all uh, shapes and sizes, all from radio waves, all the way that, and how many do we really detect? And our eye is a bit naff because it can only see a very, very small, narrow spectrum. And in fact, our eye and us have evolved to have a lower quantum efficiency so not to overload the signals to our brain. <coughs> Now, the problem with this is this means that if we are reserving the stars, we have a very finite view of what we're looking at. And with physicists, we want a little bit more information. So we will want to look at things that we can't see, and we will probably want to look at far more detail and depth than we are expecting. So we use CCDs. So CCDs are a way of, after the telescope, to record the information we are receiving. So you have the telescope and you have somewhere to receive it. Now, in the past, it's been, of course, the human looking down at an eye and we've been able to sketch what we've seen. Eventually, uh, in the Victorian era, when photography started taking off, we would put photographic film and the photons would hit it and it would produce an image. And now we're up to the idea of looking at CCDs. So for the exam board, you need to understand how a CCD works. And this is going right back to the whole idea of the photoelectric effect. So, I'm gonna run through the basic points of how a CCD works. So a CCD, firstly, so a charge coupled device, is a silicon chip that is made up of pixels. Okay, so it's a silicon chip made up of pixels. And by this, I mean it's a very small little chip, and I'm going to enlarge this. This is normally on a much, much bigger scale and on a tinier chip, but I'm going to enlarge a small fraction of one. And I'm going to say here, here's my silicon chip, and it's made up into sections called pixels. Okay? Now, there be thousands and thousands and thousands upon this. Okay? So each one of these is something special, and we're going to talk about it now. So a silicon chip is made up of pixels, right? A photon hits a pixel and liberates, whoops, I can't spell today, liberates an electron. So underneath these pixels is a photo, is, is, a, is a photoelectric material. So if I just zoom in on one on the side, so this is a pixel. This has got a photoelectric material. So a photon comes in, and an electron is liberated. Now. You don't want that electron to leave because you want to actually look at how many electrons are liberated. So, the electron is trapped in a potential well. And by this, I mean exactly the same as stopping voltage in um, a photoelectric effect. So what I do is I stick an electric field there. So the electron leaves, but I stick an electric field there 
that is able to hold the electrons in place. So this electron that gets up, um, is liberated is almost drawn back because I have a potential field across here. So it's going to be try and drawn back. So it's held in place depending on its potential. So I get these electrons that are stuck in this pixel. Okay. Now what would happen is that amount of photons would hit the pixel and a number of electrons would be liberated and stuck. And my pixel would look like this. My whole silicon chip would look like this. So each one of these pixels has got that many electrons stuck in its potential well, okay? Now what happens is an image is formed directly from this because the more electrons I have, the, bit, the brighter that that section of that sky must be. So an image is formed from the electrons in the pixel and the intensity is directly proportional to the number of electrons. So the more electrons I have in that pixel, the brighter that region of space was and I am able to create an image. So in this case, there's a very bright bit here and some really dark bits here, implying that if I was to draw this, it would probably be like a sun with a nebula, a few dark bits, and then a sort of an outer bit where I start to get darker. Now, you can imagine these pixels, these um, silicon chips, hold hundreds upon thousands upon millions of these pixels. So the kind of detail I can get can be astronomical, pardon the pun. So an image is formed from the, electron in the electrons in the pixel and the intensity is proportional to the number of electrons. Now, this is actually quite interesting because my, unlike my eye, which for evolutionary purposes is actually trying to make sure I don't get overloaded, a CCD can actually be quite efficient. The quantum efficiency can be around about 70%. And in some cases higher. This is because a CCD not only can take more information because we can design it that way, it can also take different wavelengths. So I can design a CCD to have a different photoelectric material to be able to only look at UV or have a different photoelectric material to look at different, um, only look at visible. I can also set my um, potential well to make sure that I'm only looking. So I can have a very low threshold frequency, a low work function material. So I'm looking at the infrared range but only have a potential well that's only going to stop electrons leaving that are in the infrared range, meaning every, all the other electrons would leave the actual pixel and I'm only focusing on the infrared. So you can design a CCD to do what you wish. You can make it look at different regions of the spectra, which is why CCDs are so important. They're light, they're small, and they're able to take much more detailed images than our naked eye or a photographic film. So in an exam, you may be asked about one, what quantum efficiency is. And all you really need to understand is the equation of quantum efficiency is the number of photons that have been detected by the object divided by the number of photons that actually hit it, times 100. And what you need to understand is how the principle of how a CCD works. It's basically the photoelectric effect, but with a couple of caveats. But you need to understand that a silicon chip is made out of pixels that when a photon, or photo, I do apologise, hits a pixel it, and liberates an electron, 
The electrons are then trapped in a potential well, and that's something you really need to make sure you write. And then mentioning that an image is formed from the electrons in the pixel, and that the intensity is directly, the intensity of the object at that point was looking at, is directly proportional to the number of electrons that are in that actual pixel. And you need to know that the quantum efficiency of a CCD is greater than 70%. So CCD arrays are fantastic ways of us using something to actually detect the information we're getting from the stars. From then, we can take that information and display it at any purpose, filter anything we want, get the information in any form we wish, from a visual to non-visual, etc. So that there is the basis of how a CCD array works.